Good morning and welcome. If you'd like to mark the Liturgy of the Word for this morning, you can find that at number 1180. 1180. Our opening song this morning, number 848, Gather Us In, number 848. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. This weekend, we welcome Ken O'Gorick, who will speak to us about the United Catholic Appeal. Ken is the executive director of the Secretariat for Evangelizing Catechesis 
at the Archdiocese. So please be seated. Thank you, Father. As Father Bob said, my name is Ken. I serve on Archbishop Thompson's leadership team, and I help coordinate the work and ministry of 11 offices at the diocesan level. Now, on the one hand, the fact that one person coordinates 11 offices should tell you how seriously Archbishop Thompson takes your stewardship. When you participate in the United Catholic Appeal, he doesn't spend your money like a drunken sailor, okay? On the other hand, you might ask yourself, well, why does the Archdiocese even have 11 offices or, or more than 11 offices? So, so super briefly, I'm going to share a little information with you because it helps connect the dots between your participation in the United Catholic Appeal and how it benefits not only the little flower, but the other 124 parishes of our Archdiocese. So um, a healthy parish, a vibrant, growing parish, uh, probably has a dozen or more ministries going on at any given time. And for each of those ministries, there's a contact person, a point person, if you will, at the archdiocese who serves as a resource, um, an encourager, a, a, a trainer, an educator, to help those ministries uh, flourish, if you will, in our parishes. I often say that the reason people like me have jobs is to help ministry in parishes flourish because that's where the faith is lived out, right? So I'll just give you one quick example, and it's specific to Little Flower. Little Flower in some ways has been a bit of a pioneer in the area of evangelization. Um, having a, a team of people, a parish evangelization team that's always looking for ways to reach out to the, to the neighborhoods within the parish territory. So uh, for several years, really, I know that your parish evangelization team has had a lot of good interaction with our Archdiocesan Office of Evangelization, whether it was me personally or uh, in more recent years, a woman named Anita Bardo, who, who runs our Office of Evangelization. So I could give you many more examples, but in the interest of time, I, th I think you kind of get the point. When you participate in the United Catholic Appeal, you're helping Archbishop Thompson through his staff support all of the different ministries that have to occur in order for our parishes to be vibrant, healthy, thriving, and growing, which is, which is what we want for a variety of reasons. So if you've never participated in the United Catholic Appeal before, I encourage you to make this, you know, year one. Uh, even if it's a modest gift, you know, every gift counts. Your, your prayers and any size gift are gonna, are gonna help, help get the work done. Of course, if you've participated before and you can uptick that gift, that would be wonderful. But even if, ha if it has to stay level or even if you need to take your foot off the gas a little bit for a year, that's, that's fine too. Uh, your prayers and your financial participation in the United Catholic Appeal uh, really do bear truly good fruit year in and year out, all by God's grace and mercy. So I'll be here after Mass. Uh, I'll be here during Mass, too, but I'll be here after Mass if anyone has questions or you want to discuss the United Catholic Appeal or, or any of the ministries that, that, that are supported through, uh, through our Archdiocesan offices. So thanks for your attention. It's great to be here, and God bless. Thank you, Ken. Please stand. Today, as we begin, we want to welcome all of you. We especially want to welcome all of our visitors, including those who are watching us live stream or those who will watch us later in the day recorded. Let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself to heal us and to bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. For Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Now let us give glory to God.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And now would those going to children's liturgy please come forward. My dear children, today you will learn about the sense of sight and how Jesus helped a blind man to see. You will learn to thank God for all we see around us. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, look with love upon your children gathered here this morning. Help them to appreciate the gift of seeing and how much they see every, each and every day. We ask you to bless them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now you may go to children's liturgy. <coughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, the Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the, north, from the land of the north I will gather them from the ends of the world, with the blind and the lame in their midst, and mothers and those with child. They shall return to, as, an, as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road that, so that none shall stumble. For I am the father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy, we are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us, we are filled with joy, we are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the eggs, 
exiles of Zion. We thought we were dreaming, then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongues songs of joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. We are filled with joy. And the nations themselves said, what great deeds the Lord worked for them. What great deeds the Lord worked our exiles, O Lord, as streams in the south. Those are sowing and sowing in tears. We'll sing when they reap. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness, and so for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son. This day I have begotten you, just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord.
light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows, follows me, will have the light of life. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, master, I want to see. Jesus told him, go your way, your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, I want to thank Ken Agoric for his reflections concerning the United Catholic Appeal. In the course of his public ministry, Jesus performed many miracles of healing. The healing of Bartimaeus has always been one of my favorite miracles. One of the ways we pray the scriptures is to read a passage and then imagine ourselves in the passage as though we are seeing and hearing everything that is happening or being said. When I read the gospel from that perspective, it seems to me that Bartimaeus' plea to Jesus is an impassioned plea. When Jesus asked him what he wanted Jesus to do for him, Bartimaeus responded, Master, I want to see. However, today's gospel is also a metaphor for spiritual blindness. In other words, Bartimaeus could equally have been asking Jesus to cure his spiritual blindness. Once Jesus cured his spiritual blindness as well as his physical blindness, he followed Jesus. When I was at St. Malachi, Sister Edward Ann always talked to the second graders about the necessity of seeing with eyes of faith and not just with our physical eyes. I would suggest we all suffer from spiritual blindness to some extent. Reading this gospel in light of Ken's remarks, it seems to me that the healing of Bartimaeus is also a metaphor for another kind of spiritual blindness. In other words, Bartimaeus could equally have been asking Jesus to cure his blindness to the needs of others. He could have been asking for eyes of compassion toward the needs of others. If you remember the story of Lazarus and the rich man, the sin of the rich man was not that he refused to help Lazarus. The sin was that he did not even see Lazarus on his doorstep. Each year, through the United Catholic Appeal, we're invited to come together in solidarity to support and strengthen vital ministries and initiatives beyond the scope of our parish that transform lives across the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. This gives each of us the opportunity to be part of something greater. This effort would not be possible for a, par for a parish to do alone. But joining our brothers and sisters across the Archdiocese, it is indeed possible by us all coming together. You should be receiving the appeal materials in the mail very soon. I encourage you to read about the great work that we accomplish together through the United Catholic Appeal and prayerfully consider how you can make a gift in gratitude for all of the Lord's blessings united in the Eucharist. 
My brothers and sisters, during this time of the United Catholic Appeal, please try to see the needs of others with eyes of compassion and give generously to the United Catholic Appeal. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us pray in the presence of God, the source of every good. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that as the Synod concludes, God will guide the church in continuing to listen to God's invitations and in helping us to fulfill the mission entrusted to us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all national and international leaders of government, may they commit themselves to peace over violence and dialogue over confrontation. May they strive for real solutions and stability in all areas of conflict, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, may the people of the United States turn to the Holy Spirit as they consider the choices of this in this election. May we balance all the issues and make choice that will lead our country and the world to peace and justice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are recovering from hurricanes and flooding, that God will sustain them, speed the assistance that they need, and give strength to all who are helping them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unborn, the marginalized, and the terminally ill, during this month in which the church observes respect for all life from conception to nat natural death. May we strive to promote the gospel of life in our families and communities, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Katie Gooden and Bill Babcock, who died this past week, and Marty Tamer, for whom this mass is offered, May they find eternal peace and in, and in God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we recall now in silence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, God of power and Lord of mercy, may the changing moods of the human heart and the limits which our failings impose on hope never blind us to you, source of every good. Faith gives us the promise of peace and makes known the demands of love. Remove the selfishness that blurs our faith. Grant this through Christ our Lord.
Our gift bearers this morning are the members of the Allstadt family. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, to whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, your blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese, the little flower, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and, recon and, and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope and Charles our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, in whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, <coughs> we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Little Flower School All Class Reunion is next Saturday, November the 2nd. The last opportunity to RSVP is this Monday, October 28th. Please help spread the word to all Little Flower School alumni to join us for a lovely evening. We're hoping for a great turnout this year. See the bulletin for more details. Thanksgiving blessing bags are available for pickup here in the front of church after Mass. Please fill the bag with items listed on the paper inside and return them to church the weekend of November 16th and 17th. It's not too late to donate Halloween candy for the Halloween bash. Please bring your individually wrapped candy to the parish center or the school by Thursday, October 31st. Sign-up sheets are available at the doors of the church if you would like to help with the Halloween bash. The Ladies Club Fashion Show is next Sunday, November 3rd, at Cynthia's Hallmark Shop at 2 p.m. If you have not bought your ticket yet, they will be available at the door next Sunday. Please join us for a fun afternoon. This Friday is All Saints Day, a holy day of obligation. Masses will be at 9.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. The all-school 9.30 Mass will include a procession of the saints. The 6 p.m. Mass will be our annual Mass of Remembrance, where we remember in a very special way all the members of our parish who died this past year. And of course, with All Saints Day being on Friday, that means Halloween is on Thursday, and don't forget our Halloween party from 6 to 8 in the parish hall. You've already heard about the all-class reunion, but again, I want to emphasize all alumni are invited, and if you are parents of alumni, please encourage your sons and daughters to come. That's this Saturday. You know, it gives us an opportunity for us to say thank you to you for all your support and for all the alumni to reconnect with classmates and friends and for us also to honor outstanding alumni. Today we continue our training of new servers. This, today we have one server who is, this is his very first time shadowing, and that's Charles Marin on this side, and he's ably assisted by Vincent Bruno. On this side we have a Mary, a Mary Mann, who, this is her third time, right? And ably assisted by Malachi Gordon. They did a great job, so let's give them a hand. Parishioners are invited to participate in pastoral planning listening sessions to explore where the church is today, where God calls them, and how they can move forward together. This is an archdiocesan initiative. The first session for Indianapolis will be Wednesday this week, October 30th, 6.30 p.m. at St. Mark the Evangelist at Schaefer Hall. The following Wednesday, November 6th at 6.30, there will be a second session for those who don't go the first time at St. Luke the Evangelist, Father Courtney Reception Room. So this gives you a chance to be heard in the pastoral planning process. So again, all are encouraged to join in this process of prayerful listening and collaboration. Finally, as he noted, uh, Ken O'Gorick will be up front here uh, after Mass if anybody has any questions or would like to talk to him about any of the United Catholic Appeal. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our closing song this morning, number 645, Amazing Grace, number 645. This morning we'll sing verses 1 and 4.